So the development we took over is here the first Pentacam, getting to the high resolution uh, iteration of the system, then the AXL, the measurement which I just said. And now we have actually the new Pentacam AXL wave, which included now a new parameter. The measurements which you can take with this will be, as I said, chime fluke tomography and optical biometer. That's not new. But what is new is that the Pentacam XL wave is an enhancement of the uh, previous iteration because it also takes Hartmann check wavefront sensor and retroemulation measurements. So you see wavefront, optical refraction, uh, objective refraction, and then the retroemulation as a new addition to this new device. So what is the clinical benefit in our university? We just used this for the last uh, several weeks. And we figured out that with one measurement, routine on the same measurement axis using the same alignment, that's very important, you can get the objective refraction, total eye wavefront, retroillumination, and then the previous things, optical biometry, and tear segment tomography. It's very intuitive operation and automatic release, and it's comfortable for the patient because there's only need for one measurement uh, with this device. So here's the device again, you can see the screen here. What I think is most interesting, we I run you through a measurement. And what you can see here is, first of all, the wavefront measurement. Um, we go slowly through this uh, video here. It first takes the wavefront measurement. You, of course, have to focus. You see the image. You see a little bit of the pupil dilation. And the wavefront measurement is done examination routine as a video sequence is shown here. So we take the measurement. Once this is done, with the patient. Uh, we run here through this video. You can see the lengths. Measurement is taken. After the wavefront measurement, you have to click. You see here the Hartman check. Uh, the next is done the ritual elimination, which can be useful. I show you at the end of my talk one short case. Ritual elimination is done, followed by the axial length measurement, which we use in the normal biometer. Uh, as you can see here, Measurement is done, it's released. Uh, taking the axial man management uh, measurement of this slide, uh, you can see here I'm following just the path so that you get an idea how long that all takes. You get the measurements, the axial lengths. Now you take the tomography and you see it's still on the same patient, the same measurement, same alignment. Uh, the tomography is done. And then the measurement uh, is in progress uh, here, as you can see. Uh, we have to wait for this to be processed. And then you can see here the sequence uh, of the eye, um, actually in these different meridia. And then the final assessment is done, as you can see here, uh, after these measurements are done. So finally, we're ending up this video uh, with the last measurement and showing you uh, the tomography again, which is the outcome here. And that's actually ended the the sequence of this. Now, for patients prior to surgery, what can we do? Objective refraction, as I pointed out, high order aberrations, two different pupil diameters, optical biometry for IOL calculation and tear segment tomography, and wavefront aberrations with total cornea, crystalline lens or implanted IOL, and the total eye. So it's a lot of measurements which can be done prior to surgery, an assessment of the reason for visual uh, disturbances, for example, if it's caused by the cornea or the lens can maybe be answered. Here's the display. You can see the overview. This is interesting. You have all these measurements at one display. I just run you through all of them, taking the measurements of the retroalimentation, the aberration measurement, the measurements of the um, total corneal refractive power, refraction, axial length measurement, here tomography again, and then the overview as well as the pupil size. So it's an interesting overview. So after surgery, what can we get here? Again, the same thing. Objective refraction, high order aberration, retroillumination, wavefront aberrations. Um, so again, here is a picture after the surgery, determining in cornea, internal measurement, and the total measurements, and then this outcome, what you can see here. We did some first 20 eyes. And what we found is that we compared our subjective and objective refraction with the AXL wave. We found a similar results. We also did a little bit of eye tracing measurement. We saw 
found some differences in these first 20 eyes. This is just preliminary. We just have it for three weeks, so we have to do this. Let me go to, to finish up my talk in the next three minutes. Two patients or three patients first. Here is patient one, preoperative screening. I pointed this already out with all the different markings. Uh, Postoperatively, again, you can see here the total wavefront aberration. You see the retroemulation and the measurements which can be done. Uh, and this is the combination of this giving you the outcome which I just showed. Two examples, clinical examples. One patient, uh, the first patient here is a patient hyperopia, performed surgery with a high hyperopic result plus astigmatism, and the interop pressure was uh, normal. What we performed is a toric trifocal interocular lens for this high astigmatism. This is the high astigmatism with the Pentacam AXL taken here. The other side, you can see the high astigmatism. Cataract pre-op, again this map. We use also this pre-screening map with our device all the time, right and left eye. The patient's follow-up showed visual acuity not, not satisfying in the right eye. And the reason was, if you look at the refraction, plus one, minus 2.5, the axis at the first week, 80 uh, uh, was the measured MAC axis, but it was 88 degrees, and it was even worse after the two weeks outcome, what you can see here. Now, we looked at the measurements. We basically saw the patient is not satisfied. Here are the pentacam, and you can see here at the retromination picture, you can see here the marking on the cornea. It's very important that in the future, we can measure with our devices the axis. Can you see this here? We did then the normal badal harden uh, calculation. We found that we have to rotate this lens. We did the rotation, and four months after surgery, patient came out with a very quite interesting result, 0.8. The other one was already from the beginning right away very good. The patient is satisfied. So you can see this in the uh, wave here um, with a clinical benefit after surgery. You see for a more detailed evaluation and documentation of, or if there is a difference between the expected refraction, you can see this here and you can see exactly that this machine had determined the axis even if you look back the pre and the post-operative measurement. The final case, only two slides, four years post-surgery, visual acuity 0.5, patients not satisfied, uh, secondary cataract formation, showing you high order aberrations, also showing you in the retroomination what was the problem. Patient had a PCO, you can see here there was a toric trifocal version, and of course we did a YAG laser patient treatment to satisfy this patient. So I would like to summarize the uh, Pentacam AXL wave. As I said, we just had shorter experience, but the most important thing is you get one measurement with one device, taking five different very important steps, objective refraction, total I'm wavefront, retromillination, optical biometry, and very important interior segment tomography to get your idea about the cornea. It's comfortable, I think, what we found out so far, and it should be an optimization of the software and device for better and faster measurements in the clinical everyday life. Now we have to discuss all the typical issues which we see here. We have to do studies on each of them, which we'll show in the future, but this is the first time I have seen such a measurement in these different regards. Thank you.